NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. What is going on with all you Atlanta Falcon fans out there? All you Dirty Bird folks, we got another draft prospect video. This time we got Taven Bryan. You see him over here, Mr. 93. That was the year I was born, 93. Shout out to all the 93 years out there. Birthday next Monday. It's the 10th today, so 16th. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to me. Uh, but y'all not here for that. We're here for Taven Bryan's. Uh oh, we see him. Okay, he running. Let's go, big fella. You gonna make it all the way? Oh no, he got caught. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got another reaction. The we're gonna. You already know how this is gonna go. We're gonna read the reviews about the players because a lot of these players we really don't know about. A lot of them, you know, unless you're this is your job. A lot of us don't really watch every single play of every you know college football game. We don't, you know, we don't really. Dang, he just threw him on his back like that. He just. Look at that strike. Grabbed him. Yanked him. Look at him. Bitch, shit, your Shit, your Oh, I can't cuss. I'm not bad. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to cuss no more. But, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you already know how these videos go. We're going to go with the background, player overview, their college stats, uh, their strengths, their weaknesses, and combine results. So that's how we usually normally, that's how we normally do these videos. I've seen him play a couple times. You know what I'm saying? A couple times he would make a stop in the backfield. Or he'll get a sack. See the couple times where he, you know, he stopped our run young running backs when they played Georgia. So, yeah, I seen him play a couple times, but I didn't really pay attention to him. So, this is a really nice video for a lot of you folks who, or for a lot of us who really don't know too much about these guys that we're potentially drafting. All these scouts are predicting us to pick up. So, I like to do these videos so we can get a little bit more insight on these guys. As you can see, he plays everywhere. You know what I'm saying? He does one, three technique. He could be on the right D tackle, left D tackle, the right side of the DN or left side defensive end. So that's really good. You really got to pay attention to where he's at. And I've seen a couple of videos. This man gets double teamed a lot. Uh, he gets double teamed a lot. He gets chipped a lot. So this is obviously he's he's a person that a player that you really have to scout for and really pay attention to because if they double teaming him that much, he's obviously a problem. He's obviously a problem out there on the field. So. Let's get down to the video. Let's start off with the player overview real quick. All right, so Brian is the son of a Navy SEAL who grew up in Casper, Wyoming. I don't know where the heck that is. I cannot point that out on the map at all. <laughs> Earning All-State honors as an offensive and defensive lineman as a high school senior. He red shirted in 2014 before taking a reserve role for 12 games in 2015, which he had 10 tackles, one and a half for loss. As a sophomore, Brian started two of 13 games played, making 17 tackles, three for loss, and one sack, and showing glimpses of his potential. NFL scouts got to see even more possibilities during his junior season, as he started all 11 games. One September game was canceled due to weather. I remember that. Posting 40 tackles, six for loss, and four sacks, Brian decided to move on from Gainesville after the team disappointing 4 and 7 season to try his hand at the pros. Okay, cool. So really what they're saying is this man, he his seen his uh, junior year is really where he grew and showed his talents. All right, so let's go to the overview. Talented defender with rare athletic ability and play traits. Brian's lack of production is due to a lack of instincts and feel for the position and he's still in a developmental phase as a prospect. Brian played inside at Florida, but has the size and talent to play inside or outside. His instincts and feel are below average, yikes. So his development could take time, but when he is finished product, Brian has the ability to become a disruptive, highly productive talent with a very high ceiling. Okay, so basically the saying is the man, the man really don't know what's going on. He just, he just relies on his athletic ability right now. But once he learns, you know, how screens are set up or jail breaks and all of that. I've been seeing that a lot. Uh, once he learns how to to read the offense, he'll be a much better player. How do you really, you know, really see what's going on and rely on his instincts instead of just his athletic ability? So let's start off with strengths here. His strengths: athletically gifted with loose lower body, plays with flexibility and agility of a defensive end. 
big upfield burst off the ball. Gets skinny and slithers through <laughs> gaps, causing disruption in backfield. Flashes disruptive potential that is waiting to be fully cultivated. Initial lateral quickness allows him to pace ahead of the block. Rare pursuit speed and closing burst for interior player. Rangy tackler who plays with extended life battery in his motor. Extremely tough and determined. Uses explosive push, pull, and punch release technique for quick wins at the point. Has to turn in both has to turn in both upper and lower body to flip quickly around his blocker. Works quickly to an edge to attack as rusher. Can bend under the guard's edge and corner right around to attack the quarterback. Okay. So what I'm pretty much getting out of it is the man is quick. His first step is quick. So whenever they say hut, that man is the first person to pretty much jump up and, and, and attempt to, to make a play. He has a good rip move. He, he punches real hard and then, you know, he does a little rip technique and all that fun stuff. So, all right, cool, cool strengths. Let's get down to the weaknesses here. Of course, all players who have strengths, they all, everybody has a weakness. So, narrow through hips. Body type looks out of place as an interior lineman. Lacks mass to hold his ground against power. Uh-oh. Slow to unhinge from block when blocker finds his frame first. Will stumble along interior trash and end up on ground due to lack of base width. Below average power and contact balance. Uh oh. Jostled by redirection. Production has been hampered by lack of instincts and awareness up to this point. Has to learn to keep his head up and keep eyes beyond his initial attack. Has just 62 career tackles. Five sacks despite his athletic ability and overall talent. So basically, what I'm seeing here, he's better off as a defensive man. Because once he gets to the uh, to the league, those guards, those are big guys in there. And they will, and they said he struggles against somebody who has power. If he struggles against somebody who has power, he might as well get ready to play defensive and get used to that. Because them guards in the league, and especially with the center guard combo, you know, when they chip you or double team you, he ain't going nowhere, basically what they say. And um, you know how... You know how when uh, D tackles fall on the ground and guards, you know, or whatever offensive lineman just jumps on them, the trash, that's the trash that they're talking about. If he's still standing up, he's not really good. Of His awareness isn't all that good to know that, oh, they're right there. Let me, you know, use my hands to kind of keep my balance or get a wider base to keep my balance with them right there so I can kind of jump over them or, you know, just use my hands to kind of feel my way to get through that. He's going to fall down with them. You know what I'm saying? He's going to do something goofy and fall down with them, basically what they're saying. So... I don't know. All right, let's go down. The sources tell us he's starter level talent, but I don't think that is going to be next year. He's out here getting by on his athletic ability, but he doesn't have enough feel for the game yet. That doesn't happen overnight. Former player and NFC team scout. As far as his prospect uh, info, he's from his. He went to college in Florida. He was a red shirt junior, as we read earlier from Casper, Wyoming. He's 6'4", 291. Uh, his 40 yard dash, he ran a 498, so that was decent. Uh, bench press was 30, decent. Vertical jump 35, broad 119, you know, you see the rest. And his prospect grade was a 6.35, and if I remember correctly, I think Payne and uh, Vita Vey was the only two in front of him, so let's see. Let me get the correct info, make sure I'm telling y'all the right things. Yep. So the only two people ahead of him was Darren Payne and Vita Vea. So Taylor Bryan, he's third right now. So he's not too far behind these guys. And then uh, we will get a Maurice Hurst and Harrison Phillips sooner or later. Uh, so be prepared for those. And then I'm going to have my full mock draft probably a week before the draft. I'll probably do it like the, the 20th or something, the 21st. So be prepared for that too as well. It's 16 days left as you can see. So pretty much... He's a work in progress. That's that's basically what I'm seeing here. I don't know about drafting him in the first. I mean, he seems cool, but they're saying he's you know he's kind of undersized, but he could play both. That's what they're saying. But um, maybe if he gets his awareness up, like I feel like all this is just coaching things. Like this is not stuff like you you can't teach. You know what I'm saying? And we all know Dan Quinn is a defensive minded guy. 
Marco Emanuel has been doing a good job with the defense. So I feel like they can coach him up. They can they can help this man grow into a, a Grady Jarrett or a Tack Beasley or Vic Beasley. And then he has those guys also to help him grow as a, a player. And also on this young defense. As you can see, this whole defense is like they've improved with these coaches. You know, they're, so they're teaching them, obviously – building them into something that they need to be. Look at Deion Jones, Devondre Campbell. Hopefully Duke Riley learns how to tackle soon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Keanu New, Ricardo Allen's been getting better and better each and every. All these players I've named, Tack, Grady Jarrett, you know, Vic Beasley, all these players have been growing each and every year. So if they can teach those guys, I know they can teach Taven Bryant how to get better, um, how to get his awareness up and use his hands a little bit better, get a wider base. That's all stuff they can teach in training camp and as the years go, because I can definitely see him as a year two guy being great. You know how you know how our players, you know, they came in, they did good, but their second, their sophomore year, they did even better, that much better in their sophomore year. So I can definitely trust that they can teach him how to play. Look at him. Look at that strength. Just riding the guard, pushing him back forward, three, four yards back in the backfield. Yeah, go ahead, big fella. Yeah, celebrate. Um, okay, look at him. Yeah, he just he just beating them all the time. Basically, what I also seen, um, he gets he gets so worried about getting upfield so much to the point like they catch him, you know, out of position a lot. As you can see, this man, I can see him more of a pass rusher, just as a pass rushing guy. I read somewhere that they said his run support is kind of eh sometimes because most of the times he's so worried about jumping the snap and getting in the backfield so fast that the play just goes right by him sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So, like, let's say it's like a screen or a jailbreak. He's so worried. He will get past the line so easily. You know how the lineman just lets you go on the screen. I'll be like, all right, cool. He's out to play. We're not worried about him. He's just so worried about getting upfield all the time. His jump is good. His speed is good. He just worried about getting upfield so much to the point where they'll call like a screen and they'll catch him out of play. And the next thing you know, that extra lineman I was supposed to block him, he's not worried about him because he's out to play. So they're not even worried about that. That's, there's an extra lineman to block a linebacker now. And with the with the coaches in the NFL, you know what I'm saying, with the week of preparation and they and they watch film all day, they will notice this. They'll be like, Oh, he's so he's so worried about getting upfield sometimes. He's not even worried about, you know, what's going on if it's actually a run player or whatnot. And that's that goes into his awareness. The man he still gets a feel for the game. Right now he just a lot he's just relying on his athletic ability. Look at him. look at the motor. He's still chasing them down. Good job. But um, like I said, with coaches the NFL, especially NFL coaches, NFL coordinators with the week of preparation and they watch film and see him just running up field all willy nilly, they will game plan around that. They will they will they will abuse you and they will take advantage of you. So that's one of those awareness things they they that Dan Quinn and Marquan could work on with him. I feel like that's that's an easy fix. Just it just takes some time. Um Oh okay, throw him down. Yeah. Boom. Bama running back, too. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, if he takes on a double team, he's not. He'll probably hold his ground every now and then. But if it's a double team, don't expect him to break that too often. That's what they said, uh, especially if the guard has that strength. Uh, if they have that strength against them, they will, they will win that battle most of the time. So that's what the street's saying oh i don't know what i clicked on just now i don't know what i clicked on let's get out of there uh so yeah y'all let me know how y'all feel about this pick let me know if y'all would want to trade up if he's there or would y'all want to trade back y'all feel like we could pick him up in the second round i feel like if they're if he's the best talent available go for it but if there's somebody like the linebacker out of Boise State or somebody if they're if he's not the best athlete available I'd probably say wait on him I feel like he'll probably be around in the second second round uh he's one of those work in progress type guys but if he's the best talent available I'll say go with it I wouldn't mind it I would not mind it uh even though we really need to de-tackle bad right now so y'all let me know how y'all feel about this pick would y'all be excited for Tavon Bryan on the team or would y'all not and then what did you guys get out of this video from what the scout said? 
Let me know in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Oh, shout out to Charles and Nash. He requested this player too as well. Charles and Nash, shout out to you. And if you got any other, if anybody has anybody y'all want me to react to, any of the prospects that supposedly supposed to go to the Falcons, let me know. I'm going to keep dropping these until the draft. It's like 18 days, it said. 18 days until the draft. I'm about to take off. I'm about to watch it at Hooters or something, and we're going to have some fun, man. So y'all let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Thank you for watching. If I if y'all got any ways I can improve this video, let me know ASAP. I'm going to get to it. So with that being said, man, rise up. We go. Plays on plays on plays. Plays on plays on plays. Got my jack jumping on day. Jack jumping on day. I'm so no dope. I can show you where the zip's at. Bitch, I'm in the whip. Them niggas make it play.